brought me back to life. Thank you for joining me today. Today I want to talk about the great physician Jesus Christ and how he can be a great help for you in healing your body or illness or anything that you may be suffering with or somebody else that you may know that is suffering with something that you can go to the great physician or come in agreement with them to go to the great physician so that Jesus can heal you. There's a lot of myths out there saying that Jesus doesn't heal anymore, the healing power has ceased with the apostles, but I want to come against some of those myths and teach you and tell you that God is able and Jesus is still in the healing business today. You know, the whole point of the scriptures is to, for, for, for us not to look at it as just an, an historical account, but also to give us faith for the now so that we can believe God now for things that we're needing in our lives and wanting in our life, especially those things as it pertains to healing. You know, nowadays, God has given us a plethora of doctors that we can go to at our leisure so that we can actually go and examine our bodies for certain things that may be wrong and also for those physicians to actually help us with the healing process in our bodies. So likewise, he as well wants to be the primary person that you go to for healing. If you are led to go to a doctor so that you can actually go to receive healing from that particular doctor, particular doctors, go ahead if God is giving you a piece about it. If you don't feel right about it, why don't you first meditate and ask the Lord for understanding and wisdom and uh, an unction to go to specific doctors if that's how you're leading to. But always remember that God can also heal you himself as well. Sometimes it may happen immediately. Sometimes it may take a certain amount of time. If a month, two months, a year, two years has passed by and you haven't received your healing or you haven't seen certain things manifest as far as what you are asking and believing God for, continue to believe God for. Can't just rely on the faith that you had in the past in regards to believing God for things that happened last month or last year or the past five or 10 years. Those things can only serve as monuments so that you can know that the same God that came through for you back then is the same God that can come for you now and in the future. So never lose hope. Even if you are believing, you've been praying, you've been meditating, you've been um, taking communion and certain things haven't manifested, continue to believe God. Faith is now. So don't look back, look forward and look at the present moment and come in agreement with God and the Holy Spirit and ask him to move on your behalf. And as I'm praying and as I'm teaching today, I pray that the Holy Spirit will just touch you where you're at and give you the healing that you're looking for and that you will continue to walk with him and sin no more by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name. We all know when we're going to particular doctors, there are certain things that they need from us, like a, a medical report, a medical history. Sometimes they want to know certain things about our family, if there are certain diseases that have been passed down through generations. Sometimes as well, physicians are looking to see if you have insurance. And with God, neither of them are, are needed. God knows all about you, that he can actually just himself touch you supernaturally to give you that healing. In addition to that, with physicians of this of this life, when we're dealing with doctors, there's also waiting times. And sometimes you have to schedule appointments, and sometimes you have to figure out if that particular doctor is actually in town, that doctor might be out of town. Just know with the great physician, Jesus Christ, he's always available 24 seven, 365 days of the year, no, no matter what time zone that you're living in, he's able to heal you and also work on multiple patients simultaneously. He is the God who is, could do exceedingly abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think, and there is no lack in him, and his power is able to reach down to the depth and touch every cell, every fiber, every bone of your body to give you the healing that you're looking for. Believe him and trust in him today, you know. And as well, if you're taking certain prescriptions and uh, medication that's been prescribed by your doctor, believe God that those things that you're taking will bring forth the healing. If you feel at ease and at peace about taking those things and the advice of your doctor, believe that whatever they have been prescribing and telling you to do, that it's actually going to bring forth the wholeness that you're looking for and the restoration to your body that you're looking for. Just know with Jesus, he's never had to go to school to study about your particular condition. He's able to give you the proper prescription as long as you heed to his wisdom and knowledge. Whatever the Holy Spirit speaks to you, make sure that you follow and you heed to that because what one person may need for their particular healing may be different for what God may tell them to do than he may be telling you to do. So make sure that 
you're following his guidance and his instruction and most importantly believe him and just know with jesus as well he operates in the utmost integrity he's never had to be sued by anybody he never had to deal with any type of malpractice or any type of settlements dealing with out of court he's always doing the right thing at the right time in regards to touching people and healing people as you see throughout the scriptures of healing in matthew mark and luke and john and how he also commissioned his disciples to actually flow in that healing as well so if you're a believer listening to me and watching me as well god has given you authority so to be able to pray for individuals so that the healing power of god can flow through you to them and it's not necessarily you who's doing it it's the power of god flowing through you so whenever certain things manifest it's to god be the glory and to, to christ be the glory for all things we are just vessels that god is using to allow his power to channel through so that he can Get the glory and not only get the glory but hopefully that will cause praise reports and testimonies of how awesome god is and will cause other people to want to believe in the god that we serve and the jesus and that he is the king of kings and the lord of lord and he's wanting and able to heal all who are willing to come to him all you have to do is to consent you don't even have to be a believer to receive the power of god all you have to do is reach out to him. He is wanting to reach out to you. God has already reached out to us already by sending Jesus to die for those who turn their backs on him, those who can care less about him. Those people who are watching me right now, if that is you, that's who God wants to touch right now. He wants you to receive his healing power and touch. Don't get me wrong. He also wants to have a relationship with you too. And hopefully by the end of this video or during this video, you're you are moved by the Spirit of God so that you can come into fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ and that you can serve him and walk out your plan and destiny that he has planned for you. And it's a wonderful plan. It's better plan than anything that you may have tried to come out for yourself or whatever your parents may have wanted to come out for you as well. So trust him and believe in him. So throughout the scriptures today, I want to dive in and just show you how the Holy Spirit moved upon and flowed with Jesus so much so that wherever he he went as long as the person was coming to him, that person was healed. Not only that, how he flowed in different realms of different physicians. We know we have different physicians that we may have to go to, whether it be cardiologists, pulmonologists, gastroenterologists, different types of physicians that deal with different um, maladies of the body, wanting to restore us back into the primary optimum health that we're looking for from those physicians. And I wanna show you in the scriptures how God was able to flow in these different realms of physicians and why, because of that, he is called the great physician because he's the only physician that can heal any and all types of diseases or ailments or sicknesses. And he's the only one that can heal those intangible things that are dealing with you too, that sometimes certain um, human doctors cannot, like such as a broken heart, or if you're dealing with, you know, worry or like anxiety or fear he's the only one that can touch you in those areas to give you that hope necessary so that you can actually receive from him on a daily basis and walk in victory the victory that he paid for you at the cross so that you are able to be a testament and a light to let people know that you have a hope you have an anchor you have a power that's residing on the inside of you and that same power that's residing on the inside of you wants to be spread out to any and all to whoever wants to believe so consent, consent to receive from the Lord Jesus today. We see gastroenterologists deal with the aspect of the stomach and the digestive system. They want to restore health in those areas. And we, we want to look in the scripture and see how the Holy Spirit and how God, how Jesus have moved throughout the scriptures in that realm and giving either advice or just healing people in regards to having stomach issues. And if you're somebody who's watching right now and you have some type of stomach issue right now or disease that that deals with the digestive system know that god can touch you and heal you we see in first timothy chapter 5 verse 23 paul is instructing timothy to stop drinking only water and to use a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent illnesses we know there's a lot of benefits to wine and if you're someone who's watching and that is against certain things that you may believe that's fine you flow with the holy spirit and however god is leading you in order to live your life so that you are you know, conscious of always walking with God and you don't have to feel condemned, you do that. But for those who are willing to see if this is something that could be of help and of use and a benefit for you, see if the Holy Spirit leads you into actually 
a drinking wine. There's certain parts of the country in like in Europe or um, other areas of the world where people are able to drink wine and it helps them with their digestive system. So that may be something of healing where God can actually use to actually heal you as well. And I leave some description, I leave some links in the description box below so that you can actually look to see and also always make sure you consult your doctors to see if these are things are the best things for you to be doing so that you can actually walk in your optimum health. The, the gastroenterologists deal with different things, you know, including but not limited to ulcers, irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's, colitis, celiac disease, hepatitis, cirrhosis. So these are some of the things that God can touch and heal you if you're dealing with them or any type of other stomach or digestive disease that I haven't even mentioned too, God is still able. I want to touch on a scripture right now that talks about how wise words that you speak and the wise words that you receive can, can satisfy you like a good meal. And you see how the meal here is in reference to eating. So make sure that you're speaking life and receiving words of encouragement and words of life for yourself too, so that it could, it could heal your bodies because things, words have power. You know, life and death is in the power of the tongue as we're going to see in the scripture that I'm about, that I'm about to read. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 to 21, NLT says, Wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. Always listen to the words of Christ because those words bring you satisfaction. And the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Be one who talks and encourages and edifies somebody. Be somebody who wants to bring forth encouragement to someone who may be dealing with any type of sickness or disease, even for yourself. Speak life over yourself. Don't use the language of, oh, I'll never get over this. Uh, you know, I'm always down and defeated. This thing always gets the best of me. No, speak life and say that in Christ, I'm going to have victory over this. In Christ, he's going to heal me. In Christ, I have wholeness in my entire body and this disease is not going to allow me to suffer. Speak those things. Speak things of encouragement even over yourself and see how the Lord um, moves on your behalf. And most importantly, always make sure you're, you're hearing the words of Christ and how they're satisfying you and how the Spirit of God may be leading you to do certain things as well. Another scripture I want to bring to your attention comes from Acts chapter 28, verse 8 through 9, NLT. As it happened, Publius's father was ill with fever and dysentery. Paul went and prayed for him, and laying his hands on him, he healed him. Then all the other sick people on the island came and were healed. See, dysentery is a type of you know, digestive disease where diarrhea is coming out with blood. So see how Paul actually went to Publius' father, and he touched him and healed him. And after that, you know, the prayer report went out to the entire island, and people who were sick on the island came to Paul as well, and he was healed. Paul was a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and you and I who are disciples of Christ too can walk in that power and pray and proclaim the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ too. You know, for those who say that healing is not of today, you know, I, I, I would beg to ask you the question, if you don't believe healing is for today, why do you take medication? Why do you go to the doctors? Because you can be doing something by, by taking medication and going to the doctor, you can be going against the will of God for your life if you don't believe uh, you know, God will heal. But no, none of us operate in those type of, in that type of, um, you know, thinking. Most of the time, if we're sick, we will try to do something to make us feel better, go to the doctor to help us feel better. Whether it's us or our kids or our family members, we want to take the best practical advice, knowledge necessary to help us improve in whatever way our body may be feeling deficient. So then likewise, when we look through the scriptures as well, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, there's not one example that you can show me or tell me if there is please leave it in the description box below where jesus himself you know removed sickness from somebody or 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 said to them or it's someone or a dialogue between him and between jesus and somebody and jesus said you know what you know healing wasn't for you right now i'm going to wait five years until you receive your healing or within the next two months never it was either immediately or within a certain amount of time a quick amount of time the healing was always manifested for that person and never ever ever think because we never know what someone else may be thinking or what they may be doing with their lives because certain times we can bring certain sicknesses upon ourselves with the negative choices that we may be dealing with if we want to remain in sin sometimes those effects of sin can actually bother us and boggle us down or even sometimes 
us not learn, learning how to, you know, take away the stress that's dealing us in our life, because stress is a major, major killer and can breed a lot of sickness in our bodies as well. So it's important that you walk in wisdom as well to knowing how to say no to certain things and how to sometimes organize and structure your day so that there's time in between where you're able to, to rest, relax, meditate, and receive from the Lord. We know cardiologists as well. Cardiologists deals with the, the heart system. You know, anything that's dealing with the heart, cardi cardiologists are looking forward to bringing forth health to people who may be dealing with deficiencies in their heart. So we look throughout the scriptures. The primary thing that God always wants from us is he wants us to give him his, our heart. He wants our heart to beat after his, rit his rhythm and his pattern and he, after his ways. He wants our heart to desire him. He wants our hearts to, to uh, walk in the fruit of the spirit with other people, you know, with people, whether we know them or not, whether we agree with them or not, whether they're of a different religion or faith or, you know, whatever someone else may believe that's different or contrary to the word of God, God still wants our hearts to flow and bless those individuals. And, and you know, there may be certain times where we may not be able to, you know, flow in certain capacities with certain people because of what they believe, but doesn't doesn't um, take away from the fact that God still wants us to love on those people and wants to bless and be respectful towards them. Cardiologists will look in the scripture of how God, you know, brought elation and praise to him, to, to Jesus through different healings. And um, let's look into the scriptures right now. It says, in Luke chapter 18, verse 35 to 42, we see that Jesus heals a blind beggar and there's praise and elation and, and high tribute and compliment to God and to Jesus. It says in verse 35, as Jesus approached Jericho, a blind beggar was sitting beside the road. When he heard the noise of a crowd going past, he asked, what was happening? They told him that Jesus the Nazarene was going by. So he began shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, the people in the front yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and ordered that the man be brought to him. As the man came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Notice how Jesus asked, What do you want me to do for you? And I think he did that so that the people around him and also the, people, the person who was needing the healing could actually speak out and proclaim himself. He said, Lord, he said, I want to see. And Jesus said, All right, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see and he followed Jesus, praising God and all who saw it, praised God too. So notice here that because of the healing, the miracle, it caused him to become a disciple of Jesus to follow him. And he was praising God, which gives you a merry heart. And it also caused other people around who witnessed that miracle to be happy as well. And I'm pretty sure as well, as we see in other passages of scripture, because of certain healings, it caused a lot of people to believe in Christ as well, and more soul, souls were brought into the kingdom, which is the end goal. And whatever we are saying or thinking or whatever action we're doing, we want the Lord to give us pure motives for that. The end goal, not only that we're blessed, but we're being a blessing to others and, and souls are being impacted for the kingdom. So souls can be coming to the kingdom. That is the end goal. We see in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, NLV says, a cheerful heart is good medicine but a crushed spirit dries up bone and God wants to give you a cheerful heart. He wants you to be happy so that it could be medicine to, the, to your body. In Psalm chapter 34, verse 18, NLT says, the Lord is close to the broken heart. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. In Psalm chapter 147, verse three, NLT says, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. So if you're brokenhearted today, if you are going through a messed up divorce, if you're a father who, at, who's at odds with their kids. If you are somebody right now who just went through a, a, a horrible breakup in your relationship, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend, just know that God is actually able to heal your broken heart and heal you completely so that you can live again and hope again. And that um, if it's his will be restored to that person, or if not, God will bring forth somebody else to, uh, across your path where you're able to be happy again in your life and that's only for some for those people who want to be in a relationship there's people who want to remain single and that's fine you know just always remember that god regardless of what you may be going through even if it's not a messed up relationship just anything in your life that has caused you to have a broken heart god wants to heal your, your broken heart now speak life 
through whoever is listening right now for God to flow to give you healing in your broken heart in Jesus' name.